So Paul writes to a young man, Timothy. And he tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 6, he tells Timothy to fan, fan the flame, the gift of God which is in Timothy. Fan the flame, or in Greek it's Anna zo poreo. Anna zo zo poreo, which means to stir up the fire. Stir up that fire. He says, verse 7 For God gave us a spirit, a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self control. God gave us a spirit. Not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So what we have is power that should be under control. Not out of control, but power under control. And it's interesting, this word power in Greek, it's where we get the English word dynamite. Dynamite. That stuff that explodes, that explosive power. In Greek, it's called dunamis, dunamis. So that's where we get dynamite. And Paul tells Timothy, stir this up, stir up this power. It's kind of like if you ever read about Samson. Samson, who was endowed with supernatural strength. It's not because he went to the gym or took steroids or anything like that. It's because he had strength that was given him from God and he would stir this strength up by, it was, in Hebrew it says shaking himself. He'd shake himself like stir up what he had inside of him. And Paul's kind of telling young Timothy that. And he's telling young Timothy, you have power in you. It's like explosive dynamite and it's been given to you in the spirit. See, he, God didn't say in the soul. And he didn't say in your powerful mind, Timothy. He says in your spirit, God has given you this power. But with that power comes love and also self-control. So it's power under control. Dunamis, dynamite power under control. Now I would really like to get in tuned with this power and learn how to use it and use it properly. Like I always say, step number one is knowing your identity, who you are in spirit, right? Because that is your true identity. There's a lot of people that are having a, a tough time with this. They, this identity teaching is really getting to some people, you guys. They misinterpreted this as, as new age. New age, because um, you know, new age, oh, you are God on this earth. And, and you know, thing is, Paul doesn't say you are God on this earth. You are God. But he says you're one spirit with God. One spirit means you are joined to the Father in spirit as one. Right? And you don't join to the spirit of Christ as one. You're joined to the Holy Spirit as one. Same spirit. So you have this spirit in you. But using what we have first takes a revelation of who we are. And if New Age wants to try to make that a teaching and corrupt it somehow, and then when somebody that is a believer takes the scriptures and shows something that might be similar well, it didn't start with New Age. It started with something that was written a couple thousand years ago. And this is a revelation of your identity in this covenant that started with grace. I'm going to tell you something about when I was a child. I had a favorite number. And, I, and you know, if you know me, I was, you know, I was raised Jehovah's Witness. So I was in a religion 
that did not teach identity. It taught who you should strive to become, but never who you've been made. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, you have been made the righteousness of God, of God, because you're in Christ. Now, if you're the righteousness of God, that means your righteousness is God's righteousness, right? This is where you have to understand, where is this? Where does it come from? It's in your spirit. Paul describes the spirit many, many times. The one that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. So if you're the righteousness of God, that's pretty incredible. That means God made you his righteousness because it says that God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin. So he made him sin and in exchange, he made you righteous. Jesus didn't become sin by doing sin and you didn't become righteous by doing righteous things. You were made righteous just like Jesus was made sin, if you can understand that. So when I was a young boy in the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, the number five was my favorite number and I didn't know why. If it was the look of it, if something happened when I was five years old, I don't know. But I just loved the number five. And then later on in life, the number 11 started showing up. And I started seeing 11 all day, every day. I look at a clock and I accidentally see the number 11. Or is it accident or is it something that I'm being led to see? And understanding what this number 11 means when I started communicating to God about it. Not new age. Not what other people, you know, want to interpret it as meaning. Just like, you know, you could have a dream given to you by God and you can look up the meaning of dreams by other people or you could actually ask God himself, what does that mean, Father? If that dream comes from you, what are you trying to communicate to me? Instead of just going online and looking up the meaning of dreams. Because you might not understand if you do that, you might not find out what the Father is trying to communicate to you. What your spirit is communicating to you, you know, because your spirit's joined to the spirit of the Father. So through spirit, God communicates to you personally. So I started asking about this number 11, why I'm always seeing it every day, all day. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 17 was the scripture I was led to. The, the, you know, here's something that somebody did for me a long time ago. I haven't showed you guys this for a while, but, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I keep it in my car. So, um, there's a couple things in here, I, you know, I could describe, but you got a one and a one. Right here is the number 11. In, in, in Hebrew, it would be an Aleph and an Aleph. Aleph, Aleph. And it's a picture, Aleph is a picture of an ox. Aleph is the number one, or even the letter A. It's their first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So an Aleph and an Aleph is a one and a one. It's a picture of, of ox, two oxen. And when you join two oxen together under a yoke, See, this is this beam right here, that's a yoke. It's a crossbar that goes across the shoulders of the oxen. And here's the plow right here. This is what they use to, um, to um, do agriculture, to, to you know, get the soil ready for planting seeds and such, right? So um, an ox and an ox join together, they become one. And so Aleph, Aleph, an Aleph and an Aleph. So that Jesus says, I am Aleph and I am Tav in Hebrew, or I am the Alpha and the Omega in Greek. Aleph is a picture of, a, of the ox and Tav is a picture of a cross, you guys. It's a picture of the cross. So he is the, the, the an ox would be a strong sacrificial animal. He's the sacrifice that went to the cross. You see that? Now, if you have two Alephs right here, he says, take, take my yoke. Take my yoke, so now you're joined to him, yoked to him as one. See, you took his yoke, so now you're right there with him. You're right there with him, joined to the Lord as one. So Aleph and Aleph. So it's two number ones joined together to make one. And that's what the number 11 is. 11 is two number ones that are joined together to make one number, 11. L in Hebrew and even in English, two languages that are joined together to make one word. You see, El in Hebrew means God. Even in English means aligned. So you are aligned with God, El even, 11. So why I, I show you that is because the way God speaks to me, not through new age, it's through his spirit. 
in his spirit says, 1 Corinthians six seventeen that you are one spirit with the Lord when you're joined to him. And so I, I asked about that, I asked about that, and then he takes me into Hebrew and shows me two oxen joined together as one. And, and an ox and an ox is the number one in Hebrew, which is amazing. El even, aligned with God in spirit as one, joined as one in spirit. So I'm not claiming that you are God, just like Adam and Eve, it says the two became one flesh. I'm not claiming that Adam became Eve and Eve became Adam, but they were joined together, unified as one. Do you understand that? So the number 11 really started speaking to me in life. And now that I think back about seeing the, loving the number five so much when I was a child and then seeing the number 11 all the time, what's this supposed to mean for me in life? Well, five in Hebrew is the number of grace. That's God's grace, right? And in my religion, there was no grace. We didn't live in grace. We didn't even have the word grace in our religion. That, that word was removed from our, our Jehovah Witness Bible translation. So grace has become my foundation. I live in grace and I have been graced with the Spirit of God in me. I didn't do, do any religious stuff to get there. And that's unfortunately where people have a struggle with their, their identity is because something in them still is telling them you've got to do some type of performance so that you can get aligned with God, right? Instead of that alignment being given to you as a free gift. And this is the alignment of your spirit, one spirit with him. That's what the word born again means. It's not a religious movement. It's who you are. You have a new spirit that's been given to you as a free gift through the abundance of God's grace. So five is the number of grace, and then 11 is this joining together as one. It's identity. So I realize grace is my foundation for identity. Identity has been given to me as a free gift through the abundance of God's grace, right? And it's amazing that you get to be one in spirit with the Lord, and you have this dunamis power living inside of you. You're like walking dynamite, but instead of going and destroying and destroying and destroying, and I've done a, a, enough of that stuff in my life, hurting a bunch of people along the way, right? Because hurt people hurt people, they say. So I had all this pain inside of me, and then I unleashed all that pain out into the world using explosive power in a different corrupt way. Instead of using the explosive power of the spirit in me, I was using the explosive power of my temper. You understand? The explosive power of the Spirit will heal, will bring peace. People will receive love through this explosive power of the Spirit, right? Instead of destroying things, you'll be building things up, especially people. You'll be loving creation. You'll be part of God's work of restoring, right? Giving what you have been given in the Spirit. You're like a river of, of, of flowing waters just flowing out of you. And that river is the spirit of life that's inside of you. You pouring out life everywhere you go. But if you don't, you won't get there unless you know who you are. You have to have this identity and this identity has been given to you through his grace, right? So identity is everything. And people are still having a hard time. They're still struggling with this and even corrupting it by calling, oh, well, this is new age and you're trying to teach the people of God. No, not me, I'm not teaching that at all. But I'm saying you're one spirit with him. You're joined together as him. Father is greater than I am. So, you know, I, I want to tune into what the Father says. And he's given me this awesome gift called my spirit, which is how he sees you now. That's how he identifies you. So if he identifies you that way, you, start, you should start identifying yourself that way too. And then using the great gift that we've been given, right? And learning how to use it and use it well. Instead of being destructive and living in our emotions and our temper tantrums. No, living in the spirit, which will result in love, result in peace. And also, the spirit is the spirit of self-control. So it's power under control. I remember I, I heard a story years ago. And it was about this little boy that was on a beach. And on the beach were washed up thousands and thousands and thousands of starfish. Starfish laying all over the beach, right? And this journalist was walking down the beach. And in the distance, he sees this little boy picking up stuff from the sand and throwing things into the water. And as he approaches and gets closer, he notices that it's a bunch of starfish that have washed ashore. And the little boy is picking up one starfish after another, throwing them back into the ocean. And the journalist, you know, he's seeing that this poor kid is just 
get it's he's not getting anywhere there's thousands of starfish what kind of difference is this little boy really gonna make so the journalist even says to the little boy you know there's so many starfish what difference do you really think you're gonna make and the little boy picks up a starfish looks at it throws it into the water and looks at the journalist and says it made a difference to that one do you hear what I just said you might see there's so much corruption and darkness in this world. What kind of difference are you going to make? But that little boy was using a gift. He had the power. He had the ability to take a starfish and throw it into the waters. And if you don't believe me about 11, check this out. I just looked down at my car's clock. Do you see that? 10, 11. <laughs> oh, I see that. See that little boy, he had a gift that was given to him to have compassion for these starfish and he threw them back into the ocean one by one. Whether he saved them all or not, that wasn't the point. He says it made a difference to that one. And when, you, we, when we wake up to who we are and what we've got inside of us, even if you think you're not making a huge difference in this world, you might touch that one life out there. And that might be the only life you've ever touched, but you made a difference to that one life. Do you understand? That's what we're here for, my friends, to make a difference. That little boy didn't see himself as one of those drowning starfish, or those starfish not drowning, but you know, baking in the sun, opposite of drowning, right? He didn't see himself as that, he knew who he was. And he knew what he had. He had the ability to pick that thing up and throw it back in the ocean. So he used what he had and he used it as best as he could. And that's what I encourage us to do. And that's what God's been encouraging me to do. And that's why I share these things with you. Not to get you into new age. Not to teach you some false thing. Right? But to actually show you what the Spirit's been showing me. And I get it all through this book. It's amazing. Anyway, I hope this has blessed you. Love you guys. Have a great one. I'll see you all in the next video.